The future just got here. That's the headline we went with on racerxonline.com in a story, an interview I did regarding a startling, shocking bombshell dropped on the motocross and motorcycle industry when a company no one even knew existed suddenly had a new motorcycle ready for sale and, they said, was ready to beat gas-powered bikes on a racetrack. The future had just gotten here. And that future was five years ago because I wrote that story on January the 31st, 2016, and it was an interview with one of the co-founders of Alta Motors, Mark Fennigstein. Now, here's what shocked me talking to the Alta folks back then. Look, they talked about how awesome their bike was, and apparently they had done all the development for seven years in stealth, and no one even knew about it. It started in 2010. They were obviously pumped in the performance and the technological advancements of their motorcycle. But I also figured, look, when we talk about electric machines, they're always talking about their environmentality as well, right? And I know that someone's going to comment on YouTube here that if you mine the proper things that you get out of a mine to make a lithium-ion battery, lithium, or you pour more coal into your electric power plant to provide the electricity to charge electric cars, maybe they're not as environmentally friendly as people say they are. I'm not here to argue that point. I'm here to say factually that most of the time, electric-powered machines tout how friendly they are for the environment. They do not produce emissions when you're riding or driving them. So I figure the co-founder of the company who's looking to sell some bikes, I'll just tee him up and he'll get to give his PR spiel on that part of the company. Shockingly, they didn't want to go there. Now, the actual quote in the interview I did with Mark Fennigstein said, that was not one of the primary goals when we went in. Talking to other people in Alta, they were pretty smart about it. They knew that trying to sell a motocross bike as being more environmentally friendly than the gas ones wasn't going to get them anywhere. No one's buying motocross bikes because they want to save the planet. Most motocross people don't really care about that topic. And seriously, how much emissions are you really producing with a gallon and a half of gas with some practice motors at the local track? It's not something people care about. Heck, most of us love two strokes. They pollute more than four strokes. We don't care that they pollute more than four strokes. So smart on Alta to not push that part. So why was Alta there in the first place? Well, it makes perfect sense. In almost every other application of battery powered technology, what's the first thing you ask about? The range of the machine, how long can the car go, and then how quickly can you charge it? Can I mow my entire lawn with that battery-powered lawnmower and leaf blower? And in racing terms, most racing, the races go on for hundreds of miles and an hour or several hours, except motocross. Motocross might be the only motorsport that's actually limited by the energy within the actual rider on the machine. A 30-minute moto is about tops even for professionals and for most regular Joes like myself that go to the track, you think you're pounding out motos and you look at your heart rate monitor on your watch and you've ridden for 12 minutes. Motocross is not limited by range. No one has ever bought a motocross bike saying, hey, on this gas tank, I can get 70 miles out of it. Nobody cares. And now the world knows that electric-powered vehicles can be very fast. Go type in Tesla Plaid on YouTube and see how fast a Tesla with its max power, ludicrous speed, can go in a quarter mile or a zero to 60 test. Electric is fast. Could electric beat gas straight up in a race? It could on speed if range wasn't an issue. And range isn't really an issue in motocross. So here's what I think the true goal of Alta Motors was. It wasn't to save the planet, and good on them. They didn't say it was. I think they wanted to prove that they could beat gas motorcycles straight up and thus prove that they were on the leading edge at the top of the heap in electric battery and engine technology. And I have this theory because a year after that interview, Alta raised $27 million in additional funding from investors. And if you read the press release that we also posted on Racer X that day, you can see the direction Alta was going. It says Alta has taken a Trojan horse approach to the market since its exception. Inception, it's delivered a robust and exciting motorcycle in the performance off-road segment, but underneath, Alta has quietly achieved amazing success in advanced core vehicle technologies, including the highest energy density of any commercialized pack in transportation, even Tesla's. It would go on to say that its technology has transformative implications for the entirety of the lightweight vehicle market, including mopeds, scooters, motorcycles, tuk-tuks, side-by-sides, urban autonomous vehicles, and delivery drones. We now have electric mobility platforms that offer broad applicability to other product classes from urban transport to utility vehicles, said Mark Fennigstein, CEO and co-founder. 
and as traditional automotive loses its transportation crown, this is a pivotal moment for us and for the industry. We are breaking barriers in storage, powertrain, and vehicle design. Why do I read you all this? Well, here's what I believe the goal of Alta Motors was. Get on a motocross track. Win in the one type of racing where range isn't really a factor, and thus prove you are the best, and then get a whole bunch more capital from investors, or go public on the stock market and make a trillion dollars like Tesla, or get bought by some huge conglomerate like Ford or Volkswagen or General Motors or Toyota. It almost happened. I believe Harley Davidson invested heavily in them, and then somehow that ran aground, and the next thing you know, Alta was done. Remember, the Alta Redshift bike was being built at a factory near Silicon Valley in California. Can you pick a more expensive place to build a product? And look, motocross, it's still a niche market. It's not that profitable. I cannot imagine there was a long-term business model built around building motocross bikes in Silicon Valley and making enough money to pay back the investors that spent $27 million seven years into the company's existence, never mind whatever money they had raised in the previous six years. I think Alta's goal all along was to prove they were the best of the best in electric and then get investor money or stock or get bought. It was a Silicon Valley startup. And motocross is right. Motocross is right because we don't have limitations on range and we all know now that electric can be very fast. Now the plan ran aground because Alta couldn't get on the racetrack. They couldn't race the way they'd hoped. I'm sure they wanted to go into supercross and dominate there. Alta always stuck with the idea that their bikes were 250 class bikes, not open class bikes. And from what I heard, they didn't really want to budge on that. And also, it wasn't like they were sending a fleet of bikes to the AMA or to Feld or to MX Sports and giving them laptops and saying, crack it open, put it on a dyno, see what it can do. And they were playing a little bit coy, and they wanted to race the 250 class. And the AMA is scarred, everybody. Uh, the four-stroke thing didn't quite work out the way everybody wanted. They let four-strokes in thinking, yeah, just run a giant displacement four-stroke. A four-stroke's never going to be the two-stroke anyway. Do whatever you want. What could, what's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is that the four-stroke actually wins, and then everybody needs to buy them if they want to be competitive. And next thing you know, all dirt bikes are essentially four-strokes. You can just go to the YouTube comments to find out how badly that worked out. So AMA doesn't want to do that again. They're not super receptive to just throwing electric bikes in there and seeing how it goes. So that slowed Alta up, and eventually they ran aground, and they're gone. Which leads us to today, 2.0 of this, to use a technological term. On Monday, all of a sudden, I heard we have a press release and materials coming. It will be announced at 9 a.m. Central European time. That's 3 a.m. Monday night, Tuesday morning. Eastern U.S., the Stark Future Varg, which stands for Wolf in Swedish, an all-new bike. Now, look, we've seen press releases about all-new bikes coming, especially on the electric side. If you look at cars, there's Silicon Valley car startups all the time. Is this legit? Is this thing ever going to actually come out? So when I first saw it, I kind of did this. What's the emoji? Turns out this thing is pretty legit. They've got some industry veterans behind it. Uh, you can read an interview on the Racer X site with uh, Anthony Weiss, I believe you pronounce his name. It's a big part of 24MX, which is a huge mail order company in Europe, kind of a Rocky Mountain ATV MC or Motosport over there. Uh, Eric Pernard, who's been involved in a lot of great things in this industry, I believe is part of the advisory board or at least a consultant for this company. And they say that money is not a problem. Again, these are electric startups, man. They find venture capital. They find investors. And suddenly this bike is here and it's been tested by Sebastian Tortelli and you can order it right now. And we posted that press release and I thought people were going to say, huh, interesting. Oh, no, 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 no. They were much more than just, huh, interesting. -ed. People are super interested. People really want to talk about it. As a matter of fact, in the same week on the website where we posted, hey, here's pictures of Eli Tomac and Dylan Ferrandis sitting together on their new Yamahas. We had interviews with Aaron Plessinger and Cooper Webb and Chase Sexton and Ken Roxon. Nope, the thing that people wanted to read about most was this new electric bike that apparently weighs about 240 pounds, right in there with the weight of a typical 450 motocross bike, and could produce up to 80 horsepower, but could also be easy to ride like a 125 just by hitting some mapping. So this is a really interesting product, and the thing looks awesome. And if you go to the website, it says deliveries will begin in September of 2022. And yes, they want to race the bike. Now, we know over here with the Alta story, that is going to be very difficult. You want to race a separate class for electrics? That could probably be done. To race head-to-head -head against gas? Again, AMA scarred on the four-stroke thing. 
But this is different than Alta because Varg, Stark Future, has a reason to tout the environmentally friendly nature of this bike. First of all, I think the European audience, and this is a company with Swedish roots, but it's based in Barcelona, Spain. This is a European company. I think the environmental thing uh, just plays better in Europe in general. But second of all, we know that electric bikes are quiet. And while riding areas and tracks do get shut down in the United States due to noise, it's not nearly as bad as it is in Europe. Tracks are getting shut down nonstop. We hear legendary places in Belgium and Holland, Holland are being shut down, but it's throughout Europe. Noise is a problem. Urban density is a problem. They just don't have the room that we do in the United States. And having a silent motocross bike might just save the sport. So where Alta, an American-based company, didn't want to even go anywhere near that topic at all, Stark Future, uh, yeah, that's the actual name of the company, Stark Future, I don't know, will they always be future? Will it turn to just Stark at some point? Stark Present? Stark Past? The future is Stark? Not with this bike. The future is apparently very bright because maybe motocross tracks can stay open or reopen if bikes are quieter. In Europe, that will play. In the United States, it'll come down to this. Is the bike going to be fun to ride? Is it going to be fast? Is it going to be cheap enough? And are you going to be able to ride it long enough and charge it quickly enough to be effective? Oh, yeah. The future did just get here. Remember, KTM launched those electric bikes a couple of years ago. It's totally normal. I go to the track every weekend with my son. I fire up a 1,500-watt generator and charge the bike. Does firing up a generator absolutely wipe out any environmental low emissions gain to the bike? Yeah, but we're motocross people. That's not why we were buying the bike in the first place. Let me tell you the awesome thing about this electric mini cycle that I've had for one year now, Christmas time last year. No maintenance, none whatsoever. Chain and yeah, chain. That's it, that's all I've had to do, chain. You saw the thing, it's not even clean, okay? I gotta get a new rear tire for it. Maxis, send me a new one for free. I just plugged you on the video. But that's it, low maintenance. Talk to people that own KTM two-stroke 50s. The centrifugal clutch, kids give it some gas, give it some gas, give it some gas, and then finally it goes, and then they get scared and they let off, and then they do that whole thing again, and that means the clutch is just slipping over and over, and the engine gets hot, and then it overheats, and then the ignition stator that's in there gets too hot. All sorts of problems, everybody. There are no problems with this electric bike except for the range, and I'm now finding out if you get on a larger track that has some sand on it, the better a range is a bit of an issue but you could always put a bigger battery in these. KTM tried to limit it, why? Because they know that if they put a huge battery in this, it's gonna lead someone to wanna remap it to make it even faster, which is not what they want on a kid's bike. So if you make the battery somewhat small, it kind of naturally limits how fast you're able to go. But eventually we're gonna find new limits there. The Stark Future Varg has people much more excited than I thought it would. And remember, this is not from an established brand. If this bike really does come out in September, the price I think is $11,000, but that's Euro. So then we converted that and it came out to about $13,000 US, but then the Stark people said, no, it's actually 11 US. I'm not sure. And the bike is 10 months away. So we'll see what the price ends up being. We'll see how effective it ends up being. I am shocked at the level of interest in this bike. Now, obviously there are some people that are super anti, and I do think that slipping the clutch on a gas powered bike and just hearing the engine Yes, more so on a two-stroke, but suddenly we're going to pine for the days of how cool four-stroke sounded, too. It's one of the most fun things about it. The sound, gears, clutch. It's awesome. And yeah, we're going to lose that. But I got to ride in Alta a couple times, and I can tell you, as soon as you hop on that thing, you feel fast. It doesn't have any inertia. It doesn't have any vibration. There's something about it, even though it wasn't lighter than a motocross bike, it kind of felt that way, in a way, without inertia, without spinning things that make it hard to lean over. It's a really fun bike to ride. And Josh Hills told me he's put hundreds of hours on his Alta. Chain and sprockets, everybody. That's about it. There's so few parts in an electric engine. Doesn't even really have a transmission. Nothing breaks. And that was a 1.0 product. Just imagine how much more effective it'll be because the Stark is coming out six years after the Alta. It's going to be that much better. People are really interested in this bike. So let's think about all the reasons here. If Stark Future can prove itself on a motocross track, they're going to make a lot of money because if you can prove yourself as the tip of the spear, the leading edge of battery, power, electric technology, you stand to make a lot of money. Just look at Elon Musk. So this company stands to make a lot of money if they can prove on the racetrack and they get it done. And that's going to be difficult, I think, on the AMA side, but the FIM knows that they're in a tough spot in Europe. 
Motocross track staying open due to noise is a real problem. Electric bikes, ooh, there's some real appeal there. I wouldn't rule out that this could happen at some point. And you know that KTM is developing these 50s and they're gonna have 65 level bikes and soon super mini level. Probably won't be long till they've got full size motocross bikes coming. You know it's coming, you know it's coming. The future just got here, ah, not quite, in January of 2016. But remember, where there's investment, capital, money, and IPOs like Tesla making tons of money, there's motivation for startup companies to disrupt the field. And what better field to do it than the one where you don't really care about how long the battery lasts because you're gonna get tired anyway, especially if you put it on that map with 80 horsepower. It's a little different than you think. It's not just an environmental thing. It's not saving the planet thing. It's a platform that, if you don't like it, I have to say, unfortunately, just happens to work really well for motocross. It's a stark future, everybody. And it's here.